verse 18, Jesus betrayer, betrayal, betrayal, betrayal and arrest. Tomorrow will be on Jesus before Jewish authorities. I um, was posting this on YouTube and I forgot to uh, put the camera on it. But Anyways, I'm going to start you out here. Verse 18. It says, When Jesus spoke in these words, he went forth with his disciples over the book, the brook, Sidron. Where was the garden unto which he entered and his disciples? And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times restored thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Who seek he? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto him, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon as he said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. They asked him then again, Whom seek he? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, I have told you that I am he. If therefore he seek me, let thee go thy way. That the same might be fulfilled which he spoke of them, of them, which thou gavest, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then Jesus said unto Peter, Put up thy sword. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Drink it. He was telling him to put up the sword tonight. It was all a plan, and Jesus knew that plan tonight. It was nightfall when they had left the room. Jesus, according to his custom, custom passed through the valley of Kidron, and accustomed by and accompanied by his disciples, went to the Garden of Gethsemane at the foot of the Mount of Olives and sat there. Overrailing his friends by inherent greatness, he watched and prayed. They were sleeping near him when at all at once armed troops appeared, bearing lighted torches. It was the guards of the temple armed with staffs, a kind of police under the control of pri a priest. They were supported by the t detachment of Roman soldiers with their swords. The order for the rest emanated from the high priest Sanhedrin. Judas, knowing the habits of Jesus, had indicated this place as the one where he might most easily be surprised. Judas, according to the un unaimless tradition of the earliest times, accompanied the detachment himself, and according to some, he carried his hateful conduct even to betraying him with a kiss. However this may be, it is certain that there was some show of resistance on the part of the disciples. One of them, Peter, according to the eyewitness, drew his sword and wounded the ear of the servants of the high priest. Jesus restrained this opposition and gave himself up to the soldiers, weak and incapable of infectional resistance especially against authorities who had so much prestige. The disciples took fight and became dispersed. Peter and John alone did not lose sight of the master. Another young man followed him covered with a light garment. They sought to arrest him, but the young man fled, leaving his tunic in the hands of the guards. The course which the priests had resolved to take against Jesus was quite in conformity with established law. The procedure against the corrupter who sought to injure the purity of religion is explained in the Talmud, Talmud, which details the native imprudence of which provokes a smile. A Jewish ambush is there made an essential part of the examination of criminals. When a man was accused of being a corrupter, two witnesses were suborned. 
who was concealed behind a patronage. It was arranged to bring the accused to a contagious room where he could be heard by these two without him be his perceiving them. Two candles were lighted near him in order that it might be satisfactorily proved that the witness saw him. He was then made to repeat his blasphemy and urged to retract it. If he persisted, the witness who had heard him conduct him to the tribunal and he was stoned to death. The Talmud adds that this was the manner in which they treated Jesus, that he was condemned on the faith of two witnesses who had been suborn, and the crime of corruption is moreover the only one with the witness of thus prepared. We learn from the disciples of Jesus themselves that the crime which their master was charged was that of corruption and apart from some malitude. The fruit of the rabbinical imagination, the narrative of the gospel, corresponded exactly with the procedure described by the Talmud.